right? Yet, with the, the taste of ice cream that I've had, I, I'm not satisfied. I want more. And you know, I love chocolate. I love chocolate ice cream. Chocolate ice cream tastes the same every time. It tastes like chocolate ice cream. I like vanilla ice cream. Vanilla ice cream tastes the same every time because it's vanilla ice cream. But that, just because it tastes the same every time, does not make me not want it any less. Wait a minute, I didn't say that right. Just because it tastes the same doesn't mean I, I, that I want it any less. I still want it. As a matter of fact, I can eat chocolate ice cream every day because I like it that much. You see, there's a, a desire. That first taste, that first taste put a hunger in me that I've not satisfied yet. And that is what this is designed for. It is designed to put a hunger in your heart that is not satisfied. That you continually go back to, to strengthen this, to undergird it, to, to make it firm in your heart. Does that make sense? Now, uh, we're going to close here. It's, it's 4 o'clock. But let me just point you to these two pages, or this one page, page 45, and, and show you the importance. Why is it important that you know this? First of all, there are erroneous teachings of the Trinity. You see that uh, there at the top of the page. Erroneous teachings of the Trinity. And I encourage you to read those. Because that some of those things you, you will find here in, in Zimbabwe. Unitarianism, um, modalism. The, those things are still around. They just are in different names. So I encourage you to... Um, to, to, to read those and make yourself familiar with them. But look at the next, the last thing, the importance of the Trinity. Why are we doing this? Here it is. The, the Trinity is so important because it is essential that we hold to the full deity of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The doctrine of the Trinity has tremendous implications that extend to the very heart of our faith. Here it is. If the Trinity, if there is no Trinity, then there is no atonement. If Jesus is merely a created being and not fully God, and that's what some of the, the teachings of the Trinity, these erroneous teachings say, that Jesus was a created being. Well, if that's the case, if there's no Trinity and Jesus is a created being, then how can you trust him to be to save you? Uh, well, I'm not going to trust a, someone who's like me to save me. I need I need somebody better than me. I need somebody better than you, better than a fallen human being, a created being. So the atonement is important there. Justification by faith alone. If Jesus is not fully God, how can we trust Him to save us? The nature of Jesus. Is G if Jesus is not fully God, then it would be idolatry to worship Him. God said what? Worship no other gods. Don't have any other gods before Him. Well, if Jesus is not God, if He's not part of the Trinity, then... The very fact that we worship Him would be a sin. Because he, he would be an idol if He's not God. If He's not who He says He is. If He is not part of the Trinity. <clears throat> Jesus as Savior. If Jesus is not fully God, then it is a created being that has secured our salvation and not God. In effect, this would exalt the creature above the Creator. And then finally, the personal nature of God. If there is no Trinity, then there are no interpersonal relationships between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Without the example of those personal relationships in the Trinity, it would be difficult to imagine that God could be genuinely personal and reveal Himself to us in such a way that would enable us to relate to Him. If the Trinity is not true, then the idea of a God who would come to us and relate to us and allow us to relate to Him, that's out the window. That won't, it would never happen without the Trinity and without the interpersonal relationships that are there between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The person, the persons that are there and the relationship. So you see, it is extremely important. The very, the, some of the, the most uh, important aspects of our faith rest upon, listen, a proper understanding of the Trinity. So, again, this, is, this has been a poor attempt on my part to uh, take you through this. I hope that this has not killed your spirit uh, toward the conference. Um, but uh, this has been so necessary. So I challenge you to study. Uh, tomorrow, we will begin with a message. I'm going to uh, talk to you in the morning about being a gospel preacher. What does it mean to be a gospel preacher? Now, the Bible tells you in one verse of Scripture. The Bible tells you about what, what it means to be a gospel preacher. So I'm going to share that with you in the morning. And then we'll talk about the doctrine of man in the morning. Okay? Listen, you guys, this is a challenge. I know it's a challenge to you. It's warm. It's... Um, uh, it's, it's long hours, and y'all have been great today. Thank you.